welcome to my studio. Even though I appear to be quilting at home, this is really a production studio. In 1987, Kendra Height persevered with a pilot quilt in a day program until she secured a weekly spot on the Learning Channel. Well, this is a clip from that very first program. The whole way down, both edges. Ah, the great part is, let's keep on pulling this magic out here. Well, what a kick with my top hat and my magic. I was just showing everyone how magical my techniques are. Well, we really had to scramble to buy equipment and put programs in the can. And I had to practice looking at the camera. Now, this is one of our early sets with my sister, Patricia. We worked with a very small crew. You know, there's only three people in that crew. You've seen me growing old on several different sets. Well, we've changed this living room wallpaper from white to red to blue, and we've even decorated it for the holidays. Oh, patchwork is hung throughout the house. Well, this program this is from Christmas Quilts and Crafts. We invited the whole staff to join us. And Orion came through the door with a turkey. So we established that the back room is my kitchen. You know, but it's really my dressing room. Well, you all loved the attic set because it reminded you of your grandma's house. Sunbonnet Sue was one of your favorite programs. You know, we just dismantled the attic a few years ago. Well, I also love going on location. One of my favorite sets was the garden gazebo in my Carlsbad home. We used it right here with one cameraman. It was on the program, Grandmother's Garden. Great show. Well, I also got to take the crew to my log home in Julian. We shot several programs in the house. We did log cabin. We did birds in the air and flying geese. And on delectable mountain day, we hadn't planned on the wind just whipping that quilt around or those wild turkeys that flew in, those crazy wild turkeys. But well, we've had some good times. We're celebrating 15 years of being on public television with a beautiful Road to Stardom quilt. Well, Julie Markovitz made this dynamic scrappy quilt behind me. Each star is different. Now the scrappy patchwork chain just connects those stars together. It wasn't until it was quilted that Julie noticed two blocks are turned wrong, but she just tells everyone she meant to do it. The Road to Stardom quilt shows that upward climb through 25 series and 260 half hour programs. That is just amazing. So let's step into the set and get started. I have my strips cut, I've been working hard, and I am ready to go. Now the star points are cut at six inches wide, and when you cut your strips, leave them wrong sides together, because the points are mirror image. Oh, they are just tricky little devils. Take your six inch square up ruler and cut your six inch strip into three inch by six inch pairs. Always work in pairs, and for each star that you make, you need to have two three by six pairs. Okay, after that, then just take a six by 12 ruler, carefully position it corner to corner on there, and just cut on one diagonal. Now, these two sets of rectangles are actually enough to make one whole star, four of those points. Let me just take this, get rid of it, and take one half, and open it like this. Stack all your points right side up. See if you just had one rectangle and cut it in half. Couldn't get this. It is tricky. I'm telling you. Stack these up. Okay, then now the next part of the patch is a triangle. And to do that, we have a triangle ruler. And we're just going to take and place it on a five inch wide background strip. 
I'm going to make sure I have a flat top on my ruler up here, a blunt top, line it up on the bottom edge, looking good. So you cut up one side and then just turn your cutter, go down the other side, take this, get rid of it. Now the easiest way is just to pick up the triangle ruler, flip it around, line up that blunt top and continue cutting the whole way across. I lined up my background strips right side up because once they are turned right side up and cut, don't have to do any restacking. So there is the patch right there. It's the triangles. Actually, there's three sets of triangles, three different triangles with the points on opposite sides. Now take the stack on the right. Just set it aside. Forget about it. Don't want to get confused. But take the background triangle, flip it right sides together to the star point, and carefully line up a quarter inch tip right up here. Perfect. Look at that hanging out. You've got that quarter inch there, and then down at the bottom, you have a long, kind of real pointy tip at the bottom end. Use a quarter inch seam, but I recommend that you go ahead and use a test patch because usually I sew at 3.5 stitch width. This time I like to move my needle just slightly to the right, 4.0 for a scant quarter. Okay, let's just cut this one off and see how it looks right up at the top. Hanging over at the bottom, tips on both ends, tips hanging out. Okay, drop this on your pressing mat with your dark star point on top. Set that seam open. Press right into it. Looking good already. This is perfect. Exactly what you want to have up here at the top. You've got that uh, next tip that you've created right there. I'm going to grab one from the right stack. Okay, line that up and flip this right sides together. So you match up those top tips perfectly. Once again, down at the bottom, got that long skinny thing hanging out there. And just so right along there. Let's see if I can get that. Oh, it's looking good. Hold on to your threads. This is one that your machine will just love to eat. Get all those little points stuck in there. Okay, one more pressing. Just set the seam with that dark point on the top, open, and go right into it. We're going to check this out, make sure we're ready to square it up. Okay, up at the top, we've got that quarter of an inch, looking good. We've got long tips hanging down in the bottom, perfect. We're going to square this up now to a four and a half inch square. And this is the second part of the ruler. It's called the square up ruler. And it has uh, the lines for the triangle on it. It's got the quarter inch seam right up here. So place the, tur the green lines right along those seams. Slide that right in there. And make sure you have that quarter inch up at the top. And what's unique is down in the bottom, you have about an eighth of an inch on each side. An eighth. It doesn't go into the corners like the flying geese. Put it on a small mat. And then you won't even have to pick the units up. Turn them. Okay, trim across the top, down one side. Got it on that small mat. Just give it a little turn. Cut on the, across the bottom, the right. One more time. Take these pieces, get rid of them, and check it out. Perfect. Got that quarter inch seam. We've got the eight inch seams down here. Looking good. Okay, the next step is just to set them together, the four star points, with the four and a half inch background squares and the four and a half inch center square. I already did one star part way, but you just sew vertical rows top to bottom. And then when you go back across the other way, let's just flip it like this, you want to uh, press the seams away from the star point and towards the center squares. Away from the star point and towards the center squares. Let me just line that up and see if I can't sew that along there. Hold this edge tight. You know, Orion is now the director of the Quilt in the Day series, but when he was young, 
He was really into home movies as well. So funny. He had a had a great time setting up his own home movies. The one that I love the most is whenever he set up his hamster in a remote control car and he sent that poor hamster into a building that he blew up. I remember that day that hamster was on video just kind of flying through the air. <laughs> Let's take a look at this one see how it looks. All right this look on the wrong side right here that is perfect. See how the stitches go right through that V seams out seams in on this side and then whenever you open it up, you have the perkiest points you'd ever want to see. Well, let me go ahead and finish my stars, and then I'll show you how to make the chain block. I zipped up six stars for my lap robe. Now, if you want to make a wall hanging, you just need four stars. How about a twin? You need eight. A full queen needs 16, and if you're going to do a king size, you're going to whip up 25 stars. That is one big quilt. Well, the stars are set on point. Now, in this wall hanging, the other blocks are those chain blocks. In the very center, oh, this makes sense, it's called the center chain block. In the center of each of the sides, side chain blocks. And then in each of the corners, there's a corner chain block. Oh, it just makes too much sense. Well, these are the units that go into the chain blocks. First of all, you have four and a half inch background squares. Remember, those were the size of the points, so it all goes together. You need to have dark medium for the center of the chain block, and then you need to have light medium, two different light mediums, in four patch to complete the block. Okay, this is what the block looks like by itself. The center chain, you've got one very center one, You've got four of the background patches. And then see how all the chain blocks, the same fabric turns and points in towards the center. Okay, that's the first one, center chain. Now, you've got the side chain, and we're down one four patch. But once again, same fabric going in towards the center. And then the very corner has one last, only two four patch. All the rest are just background fabrics around it, that one medium dark in the center. Same fabric, that medium purple is pointing into that dark green. Well, when you make your four patch, all you have to do is take those good old two and a half inch strips, a background of one, and then a background with the second one. Seam them with that quarter inch seam, press those seams towards the dark. And then all you need to do is just consistently Flip them right sides together. Always have that same fabric on the top. Just wiggle right in there. Oh, I can feel those seams just locking together. And then just get right over to that left edge. I always line up my strips on the mat so that I can keep everything going straight. Okay, I put a little bit of tape on my ruler at two and a half inches so you can just go right along cut all of those four patches for each one of those chain blocks and they're going to just lock right into each other. It's too easy to do. So whenever you start out, just hold on to your threads. Oh yes, little stiletto works. Usually roll it back just to check, look at it, make sure, feel it, hold that down and just push it right in there. You know, I did want to explain that no animals were hurt doing Orion's home videos. Oh my gosh, you wouldn't hurt an animal. You know, he's been behind the camera for so many years, and whenever he has needs an extra crew member, he'll just pull in his dog, Tabitha, give her some equipment, let her help on the set too. Okay, once you have that four patch, let's check on the right side. Ooh, it's looking good. Okay, from the back side, I want the seams to lay flat. So you can almost just take your finger and just kind of work right in there, unsew that center seam, and you create that little four patch right there like that. And then once that seam is open, just drop it on your pressing mat, wrong side up, and the seams 
just swirl right around each other so that they lay flat in your finished block. Ooh, that's looking great. Actually creates a little four patch itself right there. Now, so that these seams lock together with the stars, once you sew your vertical rows together, and you go back across the other way locking them, always take those final seams and press them in towards the middle. That way you've created a seam that will just lock with those star points. So let me get all of my chain blocks done and I'll go to the design wall, show you how to lay everything out. There are just two units left to finish your layout. The first one is an 18 inch square for your side triangles. Cut them on both diagonals so that the stretch, the inside, goes on the inside of the quilt and the straight of the grain ends up on the outside of the quilt. It's much better when you add your borders. The second unit is the 10 inch square for the corners. Now, cut those on one diagonal and once again, that bias is going to go on the inside and you'll have the straight of the grain on that corner. Now put your stars on point. And if you want to calculate your own measurement for the length and the width of this quilt, you remember that you want to measure point on point, straight across. Actually, the block is 12 and a half inches square, but when you measure on point, it's 16 and a half inches. So take those stars and lay them on point. Lay out your six star blocks, three down to a cross. Pop in those center chain blocks. Your side chain blocks and your corner chain blocks are last. Add those side triangles and last of all, your corner triangles. I want to show you how to sew the top left corner together. These are the side triangles here and then the corner triangle right here. Okay, whenever you sew the rows together, always take the block and flip it onto the triangle and line up that corner area right here, but you always have a tip hanging out at the top, hanging out on the opposite end. So if you want to put a pin right here, got the tip right here, you always sew with the triangle on the bottom because it is on the bias, it's got that stretch to it. So just set the machine, let me see, quarter inch, hold on. And as you sew across, make sure that you just keep the seams laying flat just as you press them. And sometimes you have to lift up on the bottom, make sure that you keep those two pieces together as you go right down along there. And then the pressing is always set with the triangle on the top and lift it up towards the triangle. Ooh, I love steam. Got to get a little bit of steam on there. Okay, so that's the triangle. Let me just drop it back down in here and you can see how it's coming together. Okay, there we go there. This one is going to come on the next side. Flip it right sides together. Match up that square corner. Tip at the top. So with the triangle, just keep on going. Now, I like to take and trim off my tips before I go across the other way. So let me just line up like this, just cut off that tip, get rid of it, and then you're ready for the next step. Corners are always last. They're gonna have some nice tips hanging out on both sides. You flip those right sides together, so with the triangle on the bottom, flip them out, and then all you need to do is just square up those outside edges before you add your borders. The framing border is two and a half inches wide, and the wide border is six inches wide. Now you want to sew these end to end so you have long strips. So you can take those long strips, cut those pieces off the length of the quilt. So I have a little tip to help you get it done even quicker. Okay, take your strips and stack them up so that the salvage is all on one end and the folded end is down on the other. The first thing you want to do is just take your ruler, take your rotary cutter, and cut off 
all of those salvage edges and get rid of them. Then take the top strip and just fold it up. We're not even going to think about that one. But go to the next two strips in the stack. They are already right sides together. So you just take those, line them up. You sew those right through. Keep that whole stack handy. Then go to the next two. They're already right sides together. Now, doesn't this look easy? So you just keep on going right down through the stack, picking up the next two pieces, one after the other. This is the last one I'm going to do for you. But once you have them all sewn along like this, it kind of looks like a loop-de-loop-de-loop -loop -loop running all along there. Then all you need to do is just clip these connecting threads. Press these seams open flat, and you will have your border strips all ready to go. This queen size quilt is the coziest quilt to snuggle under. It's made from Harvest Medley flannels. Well, I just had a stack of fat quarters, so I made it scrappy with each star the same fabric and the background squares and the four patch all different. Well, my cousin Carol Sleppy quilted this one. To go along with the fall theme, she quilted maple leaves and vines in the border, and then she did half circle feathers in the side triangles. Oh, it just feels so good. Well, Teresa made this one, and she used a continuous line stencil for her quilting. And then she filled in the area with loops, just swirling around that stencil. Well, she used my second line of fabric, rainbow florals. And the colors in the blocks are just pulled from the colors in that large scale floral border. It's just beautiful. And I'm just so proud of Teresa's quilting. Well, my cousin Carol has quilted many quilts for me, but this one is my all-time favorite. She did puffs of wind just twirling around the stars, and then four little leaves quilted in the medium squares. Stitch in the ditch around the chain blocks just really perks up those patches. And then the batting is 80% cotton with 20% polyester, and it's the polyester that gives this quilt that extra kick. Well, after watching my programs, you may think I do everything perfect, but I have done some doozies. They're just edited out. This queen size quilt is the coziest quilt to snug on. <laughs> okay. The wall. <coughs> God, I <laughs> got this phlegm in me. Okay. <laughs> Life is just a bowl of cherries. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see a little mouse. <gasps> What's your camera? Sorry, I didn't know if it was going to completely fall over. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> well, when I was teaching in Hawaii, there was a circus going on next door, and an elephant escaped from the classroom. Is that one of your students? <laughs> 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 I was getting really good at this, huh? Home at last. Oh, it feels so good to be home. In the last four months, I have traveled 27. Didn't go very good. <laughs> It's time to go out this fake door that goes absolutely nowhere. So enjoy your quilting. Hey guys, remember to turn off the lights. <laughs>